the official business. So I'll read it. Then we can okay. do some. Okay. okay, I'm going to call the meeting to order. At this meeting, the commission will hold hearings to notice of intent, request of termination of backability. The commission will also be voting decisions and taking out of the business. No hearing times have been assigned to the specific agenda items, and the commission will take them in the order they are listed. Discussion and action items may be taken up at any time. In accordance with the Commonwealth of Massachusetts Executive Order suspending provisions of the open meeting law, we are conducting this meeting online. The Commission welcomes participation in the meeting by the applicants and general public. Attending the meeting tonight are seven Conservation Commission members, Eric Colley, Margaret Wheeler, Jim Gazzo, Ann Jeffries, Marilyn Frank, the well Donovan, and Peter Mahler, and the Conservation Resource Planner, Matt Salem. This meeting is being recorded by Westwood Cable Access TV. We respectfully ask that everyone mute their computer microphones and phones when they are not used to avoid unnecessary noise during the meeting. This is an open meeting, so all the panelists who have access to the chat panel, please only use chat for technical issues related to the video conference. The commission will proceed by opening agenda items, having the applicant or the representative present the project or previously opened public meeting, they will provide a brief summary of the project. The commission and staff will follow questions, and then we will open up to the public for questions and comments. At this point, if you wish to participate, you'll raise your hand and your microphone will be unmuted for you to participate. Due to the limitations of the platform, attendees that are accessing the meeting via the telephone number at the top of the agenda only be able to listen to the proceedings and will not be able to contribute. Please access the video conference via the link on the agenda, even if you do not have webcam to participate. Okay. Okay. So, um, yeah, you want to you want to uh, take up that request for. Uh, Person circle. So uh, I made a motion to approve yeah, it. No. Okay. Second. Okay. All in, all in favor uh, of uh, approving the request to install the erosion controls before April first. Uh, Marilyn. Yes. Eric. Yes. Margaret. Yes. Ann. Yes. Jim. Yes. Noel. Okay. Yep. Um, Matt, do you have to inspect it before he can start having any work done? Yes. So this is so after it's installed, I need to inspect it. Um, and with kind of his revised schedule that was provided to the commission last two weeks ago, um, it the only activity before April one is the ero installation of the erosion controls. Um, so I'll communicate that to him and I uh, I'm sure he'll probably be get to it this weekend and I'll be looking at it beginning of next week. Okay. Uh, how about the meeting minutes? February 10th. Anybody have any changes to February 10th meeting minutes? Motion nope. to approve? So move. Second. Second. All in favor, Marilyn? Yes. Eric? Yes. Margaret? Yes. Ian? Jim? Yes. Well, and Peter, yes. How about the minutes from February 24th? I don't have anything like that. Nothing there? They're going good again. Well, move to approve. I moved. Second. All in favor, Marilyn? Yes. Eric? Yes. Margaret? Yes. Yes. Jim? Yes. No way. And Peter, yes. Okay, we got one more minute. Um, the certificate of compliance is I can uh, vamp for a couple minutes, vamp for a minute at least. Yeah? Yep. Um, so this is. <laughs> Uh, some of you remember back September 2019, um, the homeowner came before the commission to uh, install a pool in the backyard between the wetland resource area and the house. Um, it was previously approved under the original uh, order of conditions for the property, and the um, but it was never installed. Um, so the um, surveyors went out, did the as-built of the house septic um, and the pool area. Um, at that time, this is probably back in December, 
the conservation posts weren't installed at um, correctly and the language that is typically included in the deed um, wasn't either. Um, so those were two uh, deficiencies that we requested uh, be corrected before um, the certificate of compliance, was, the requests were brought to the commission. Um, they have included the typical uh, portions of the slot fall within the 50 foot no disturb um, buffer, um, which is con uh, common for most of our orders of conditions. And the um, uh, conservation posts along the 50 foot uh, buffer to the wetland have been installed. I inspected them last Friday. Um, and I'm comfortable recommending that the commission issues both uh, certificates of compliance for, um, uh, sorry, I have to pull it up, I forget the numbers, 334-1420 uh, and 334-1735. Motion. I moved. Second. Second. All in favor, Marilyn? Yes. Eric? Yes. Margaret? Yes. Ann? Yes. Jim? Yes. And Noel? Peter, yes. Yeah. Is Noel still okay. has no? No. Yeah, we don't, no audio, right? No. Um, Noel, you might want to try calling in on the using the phone number. That might be like me. Yeah, like Peter. At the That's same time, if you have a video on. Okay, uh, let's move on to our uh, 7 30 p.m. Uh, agenda items, which is the first one is open. Anybody from the commission have anything to open for them? No. Matt? I have a couple things, Mr. Chair, thank you. Um, two of them are just more public service announcements for the community. Um, the annual town election is May 4th, and the annual town meeting is June 12th. Um, so please um, engage in the democratic process. Um, my last one is I spoke with the uh, Lessie for the day field. Um, she has um, she has been working to rectify the soil sampling, um, getting the results to us. I think there was a billing issue, um, and I will be meeting with her on Monday. And so, and a preliminary plan for her is uh, when she can have the um, uh, the the contractor she uses who tills over the field. Um, he's she's hoping he can be out in May at, at some time and she's looking to plant um, come June um, so I, I'll have more to report next meeting after I meet with her um, and one last one um, I know Jim had sent me an email regarding uh, the end of maple was it or yeah maple um, there was uh, a no trespassing sign and um, some cement blocks that were have been out there um, and after kind of one of the last letters Carol sent out um, was requesting that those be removed I've followed up with uh, the email and or followed up with the gentleman in an email and um, we'll be looking to remove them and um, it's it is town property at the end of the street so we'll be looking to um, provide access um, and install a trailhead there. Okay. Okay. Um, in addition, there was that the uh, conservation uh, property sign that had been taken down and uh, thrown into the woods that I found. Um, I assume we'll put one of those back up, one of the green ones that says Western Conservation Commission. Yes, I, I'll work on that, finding those. I'm sure there's I'm sure Carol has a box of those hide it, had, a, had a box of those hiding in our office and um, okay we'll make sure to get those in get those get I have the I have the one that was in the woods but it's a little beat up okay uh, any 
any comments from the audience for open forum? I don't see any raised hands. So we'll move on to our next agenda item, which is the public hearing for Smith for Paul Lewis. This is a legal notice under Massachusetts General Laws, chapter, chapter 131, section 40, Wetlands Protection Act, Wetlands Non-Zoning, Wetlands Bylaw, chapter 171. The Western Conservation Commission will hold a public hearing on Wednesday, March 24, 2021 at 7.30 p.m. very remote participation to consider a request for determination of activability filed by Timothy C. Smith for the removal of 12 pine trees and two oak trees within 100 feet of a jurisdictional wetland at Poor Poly Road. Assessment map 67, parcel 13. Okay. Are you there, Timothy? I am. Hello. Okay. Hello. Give us a brief description of uh, these trees we want to remove. How far are they from the wetland, and uh, why do you want to? Yeah, they're about um, they're 100 feet. So that that's the reason why I'm I'm uh, talking to you guys tonight, and it's just a safety issue for these trees. They're all either dead or dying. Um, in the report, there's a, I took some example pictures of them. They're all chewed up. Um, some one that's like leaning over. So, uh, and then there's, there's a couple oak trees that are within the uh, 100 feet that I just want to get trimmed a little bit. Okay, so I, you're not going to stump these? Sorry? You're not going to stump them, right? You're just going to cut them down? Uh, no, we'll, we'll leave the stumps. You're going to leave the stumps, okay. Yeah, but it's just, like I said, it's it's just a safety thing. I'm not putting a pool in or anything. Right. Matt, have you gone out and looked at these? Yes, I met yesterday, um, and there are some, and I think, like, uh, like Mr. Smith mentioned, a lot of them are very tall pines. Um, some have already kind of are, are leaning towards the house, leaning into other um, trees in the area. Um, and uh, when discussing with them, uh, it, that they are to be removed via uh, crane service, correct? Yes. Questions from the commission? So Peter, you know, I'm looking at some of these trees um, that are quite a distance from the house. Um, so I, I can understand perhaps if they're dead, but a leaning tree that's not leaning towards the house or is going to impact it in any way, why would we be allowing that to be taken down? I, I can clarify, Eric, the leaning trees, um, have have already become uprooted um and they're leaning uh, and leaning into other trees um, okay. as with most pines you know they grow quite straight um these are leaning these these have you know through one re reason or another whether they've already um are dead and um or, or have been kind of blown into the other trees. That's the leaning. It's not the growth of the tree. Um, okay. He's leaning. At least there's a distinction there that, you know, I, I, I prefer the description, you know, typically if it was just a leaning tree and it was away from the house and wasn't going to cause damage if it fell, we probably, you know, would leave it. But in this case, it seems like it's already compromised. Okay. Okay. Any yeah. other questions? Commission? It's a little scary out there. If you wouldn't want to walk underneath it if, it if the wind was blowing, just in case it came down. It's mostly yeah, I'm afraid for the kids out there with all these all these trees that are dangerous. So that, that's all I'm trying to do. No, I get it. I, I had about nine or ten big ones come down in my yard during the microburst, so I can appreciate oh, that. Wow. Yeah, that's uh, that's scary. It was. Okay, uh, any comments from the audience on this application? Uh, James, hands up. Okay, I'm sorry. I have a question about the uh, the ones that are up near the uh, the front of the house. 
are those in within our jurisdiction or are they outside 100 feet? I, I don't see a scale on there. The 100 feet I think goes pretty much to that, that, that the last one that, that's on the bottom there. Okay, that big, the two arcs, those are the yeah, that's 100 feet? Yeah, the two arcs are. Okay, got it, thank you. A little stream goes underneath and that's, that's supposedly that's the 100 feet. Yeah, the, the, there's a, the stream which, um, it goes into a drainage underground at that point. So it's a hundred, if the jurisdiction would be a hundred feet from the um, terminus of it. Okay, I don't see any uh, questions from the uh, audience. So can I have a motion to, to uh, offer this for a negative determination? So moved. Second. All in favor, Marilyn? Yes. Eric? Yes. Margaret? Yes. Ian? Yes. Kim? Yes. And Noel? Yes. Peter, you? Yeah. Okay, motion to close the public hearing. So moved. Second. All in favor, Marilyn? Yes. Eric? Yes. Margaret? Yes. Ian? Jim? Yes. Will? Yes. And Peter? Yes. Yeah. Okay, you're all set. Okay. Thanks a lot, guys. Thank you. Okay, we're going to move on to our next agenda item, which is a continuation of public hearing for Lynn 44 Lawson Road. I'll give a brief overview. I think the applicant's wife is currently muted, but um, I think was going to, ex they've provided some uh, additional information as was included in the packet. Um, so back in uh, November 18, the homeowner came before the commission to request to do some hard replacement of the hardscaping, um, the field stones that were uh, between the house and Nanasset Lake, they were also seeking approval to remove, I think it was a maple um, that was um, compromised. Um, and they, the commission had concerns about the actual size of the, um, I was seeking revised plans with the actual size of the um, patio pavers and they have provided, um, again, one of the included uh, emails this afternoon um, shows the, the, the proposed kind of semicircle uh, below the deck, um, a ring around the uh, sandy beach area, and they've removed the pathway from the, from the, uh, from the patio to the dock. <laughs> Add you to the dock, um, and these photos do provide um, a, a, a decent sh show, kind of the extent of the vegetated um, buffers that were um, required back when the house was built in, I think it was 05, and um, the septic as built um, that I was able to find um, shows the. Um, um, uh, shows the naturalized, um, uh, the, the landscaped and naturalized areas around, um, you know, half the, half the waterfront. And, um, so I, unfortunately I hadn't found this at the time of the original, um, filing or public hearing, excuse me. Joe Lee, are you, are you there? Yes, uh, I'm here with my wife now. I've, I've got a meeting, so. Okay. On this new plan? Excuse me? I'm, I'm asking for comments on your new plan from the commission now. Yep. Matt, we have confirmation that these are, uh, are in fact permeable pavers? Yes. Uh, Yes, and I'll make sure to, um, I can add that as a condition that, you know, they, they shall be installed as permeable pavers. 
That's a day. Okay. Any other questions from the commission? This looks a lot better than the original design. So, do we know what the reduction is in the hardscaping? Because there's a reduction. Uh, I know the proposed is um, at least in the semicircle area, or um, I calculated that out to be about 660. Um, I don't know what the original or, or what the existing is, but I think it's, it, it, I do agree that I think it, it is existing, or, um, it is a reduction. And uh, I mean, additionally, it is being uh, relocated further away from the resource. Um, and, as, and we have those buffers as well, as they show on this plan here? Yes, the, 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 okay. those are existing. Um, I had the photos. Um, unfortunately, I took them, you know, but nope, that's okay. this, this, this week. So, so you don't see, you, they're all pretty scraggly, but um, so the existing buffers are, you know, located here. Um, and this is the, the, Propose the tree that is proposed to be removed. Um, that's compromised. You can kind of see the hole right at the bottom where my hand is. Um, that some uh, woodland creature has been. Uh, In our previous discussion, did we have them uh, planting a new tree when they removed this somewhere else on the lot? Yes, okay. we agreed to plant a birch tree or uh, aspen. So. And I can include that in the um, okay. negative determination as well as a. Okay, that's good. Okay, this is an IDA. Right. Okay, it's okay. Uh, if there's no more comments, any more comments from the audience? I don't see any. Um, so can I have a motion to do this a conditional negative? I moved. Second. All in favor, Marilyn. Yes. Eric. Yes. Margaret. Dan. Yes. Jim. Yes. Well. Yes. Peter. Yes. Motion to close the public hearing. So moved. Second. All in favor, Marilyn. Yes. Eric. Yes. Margaret. Dan. Yes. Jim. Yes. And Noel. Yes. And Peter, yes. Okay, you're all set. Thank you. Great. Thank you. Appreciate Thank it. You. Yep. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Okay, we're going to move on to an next agenda item, which is a continuation of a public hearing for KMI Real Estate LLC, 19 Hopper Road. Uh, Yes, Mr. Chair, we received uh, a continuance uh, of the public hearing without discussion uh, from the applicant to the April 14th meeting. Uh, they're still waiting on the planning board to review the um, draft decision or the draft decisions to be presented to the planning board. Okay, well, can I have a motion to continue this to uh, at 7.30 on April 14th? I move. Second. All in favor, Marilyn? Yes. Eric? Yes. Marla? Yes. Ian? Yes. Jim? Yes. Noel? Yes. Peter? Yes. Okay. Uh, next agenda item is a continuation of a public hearing. <laughs> Oh, uh, sorry, Mr. Chair. Um, the home, uh, Duke has requested this be continued to April 28th. Um, the engineer um, has been in working with the state and should have something um, that they, they anticipate submitting materials for the uh, re commission to review and we um, at the April 28th meeting. Okay, I hope, I hope we finally get some uh, forward sure. movement. Okay. Motion to continue at uh, 7.30 on April 28th meeting. I move. Second. Uh, all in favor, Marilyn? Yes. Eric? 
Yes. Margaret. Yes. Ian. Yes. Jim. Yes. Oh, well. Yes. Yeah. Peter, yes. Uh, let's see, discussion items. Before we go to Dear uh, Run, um, recommendation for management services at Hill Yeah. Yes, thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, the RFP uh, was opened, um, I think it was two Fridays ago now, um, and maybe it was la mid middle of last week. Um, and, and we opened them with the um, project procurement specialist from the town manager's office uh, with which this was filed. Uh, these were received. Um, the, there was only one response. It was um, Dave Dumarask with uh, Farmer Dave's. And um, as was included in the technical proposal, um, his price has gone up a little bit. Um, but um, if I think it, it's important to, you know, continue to manage Hill Orchard as an orchard um, and uh, would request the commission to uh, recommend this, um, recommend the select board um, issue the contract with Farmer's Days for a three year term up at Hill Orchard. For sure. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Everybody okay with it? Yes. Yeah. Okay, can I have a motion? So moved. Second. All in favor, Marilyn? Yes. Eric? Yes. Margaret? Yes. Ian? Yes. Jim? Yes. Yeah. Well? Yes. Yeah. And Peter? Yes. Yeah. Okay, Matt. Matt, what's uh, this last thing? Town of West's social media participation policy? Uh, so uh, that was a policy that was approved by the select board um, and it's for if a town board or depart uh, board or committee or even town department for that matter um, we've received one as well um, any uh, just standardizing the use of it um, you know in terms of if you are speaking on there, um, make sure that you're identifying yourself as a res. You're 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 responding and you know commenting in your capacities as a town resident and not um, as a, a a town official. Um, the town uh, the conservation commission doesn't have a um, web uh, uh, any social media accounts currently. Um, I'm not eager to have any yep. or to manage it i think we should keep it that way yeah jim i like i like your style um but with that being said i i've, I've if it's if the commissioners are okay with it i will have the pages um uh, printed um for tomorrow uh, when you come up to sign the other uh wpa forms um to acknowledge that you have received it and read it um and if we can okay Okay. Yep. Great. Sign it tomorrow. Okay. Our next. Our next. Yeah, you know, Marilyn. You I just want to say one quick, quick thing about uh, uh, Hill Orchard and David. Uh, he was featured on Chronicle, and so is Elizabeth Almeida. And we can get the link. I'll have Elizabeth send it to Matt, and she can give it to everybody. It's a wonderful show. Uh, to see the farm and to see everything that he does his original farm and what he's doing up at Hill Orchard and then Elizabeth as well. So I think you all should see that if you haven't seen it already. Yeah, yeah, get us that link. That would be great. I'll get it. Thank you. Okay, um, our last discussion item is a uh, discussion of a CR encroachment. Um, and I guess I'll let Matt take the lead on this since uh, you've spoken to uh, the residents up there. And I know there's a bunch of them on the meeting and we received a bunch of information from them. So I'll let you lead this discussion then. Thank you, Mr. Chair. So we were reached out to, uh, our office was reached out to by uh, the homeowner at Six Deer Run um, and observing encroachments by his neighbors and 
I wanted to bring it to the commission to, um, unfortunately, this is an older uh, conservation restriction. The subdivision was approved in the late 90s, I think, or the, the conservation restriction was approved in, I think, 99 by the town and the state. Um, and unfortunately, there is some ambiguity in the language. And I, uh, unlike, you know, conservation restrictions going forward these days, there aren't, there isn't any markers out there to delineate the, what is actual open space and, and um, from the rear boundaries of the homeowner's parcels. Um, and as I mentioned, I, I'm looking for guidance from the commission into how to interpret. Um, I know I've received a couple um, emails and forwarded them to the commissioners today um, regarding um, the properties on Deer Run and behind Sinbad. Um, and you can uh, have, Mr. Chair, I'm not sure how we want to go about presenting these or um, I defer to your judgment. Um, I, I, I think one thing we're all going to need because I've got a feeling this is going to be discussed again at our next meeting is I think we all need to get a copy of the CR so we all can read it. Uh, that was included in your packets. The whole thing was? Yes. It was the one we got today. Yeah. yeah no, oh, that was. No? I quite sir, I, it was It was part of that big, long weekly packet. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it was that in the plans. I mean, I'd be also welcome. Uh, I would, if we wanted to schedule a site visit to go out, I'd be more than happy to do that with some of the commissioners. Um, and, 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 you know, we can open kind of, or start the discussion now, have a site visit and then, you know, continue it in two weeks or, you know, it, the, the meeting following to um, try and figure out the best way to resolve it. Okay, so we so we do have a copy. I must have missed it in the packet. Okay. Oh, I see it now. Okay, we got it. Um, yeah. Before we hear, we're we're going to hear from the neighbors here, but uh, I I definitely think we need to do a site visit. It doesn't have to be the whole commission if it just wants to be you know two or three of us that will take this up. So. Um, it's up to you guys. Who would like to go I'm up for a visit? site visit? Okay, I'd like to visit. Yeah. Okay. I would yeah. too. Okay, so we'll plan on a site visit. So let's talk to some of the neighbors up there, and then we can schedule a site visit. So, okay. uh, Matt, who should we talk to first here? Um, I don't have a pref. If take it in order. Okay. Uh, we'll start with six deer run. Deer run. Uh, uh, Stephen and Charlene Costa, you're unmuted. Okay. Hi, Matt, and all the boys. Hey guys. Thank you. Uh, good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Uh, again, this is uh, Stephen and, and Charlene uh, Costa, six deer run drive. Um, the couple of uh, items that we would like the, the board's help um, uh, recycling. Um, and and, um, and also um, their opinions on some of the violations. Um, let me first uh, mention that uh, as a trustee of the Chestnut Hill Estates for over 20 years, our board of trustees has always been respectful of the Conservation Commission restrictions and have enforced any requirements um, that have been previously uh, either um, requested by or um, were brought to our attention uh, by uh, Carol Gumbett. Um, and you know, I've tried uh, to be a good steward of uh, for the protection and, and natural habitat, um, natural wildlife habitat for the section of partial uh, age behind uh, Deer Run Drive, consistently trying to keep the fishermen, um, as an example, uh, from disturbing the beaver dens that are, that are directly behind um, or between uh, six and, and eight. Uh, deer run um, and also maintaining the natural views. Um, that being said, when Matt and I um, reviewed 
the continuous violations at Eight Deer Run Drive again as a steward of uh, of this uh, land. Um, I I voluntarily voluntarily mentioned that every spring I trim the tops of the prickers or thorny shoots, um, and just to maintain the open meadow. Um, and, and basically and basically trying to maintain an early vegetation state but not cutting the field grass or disturbing any wildlife nesting uh, like the rabbits or, or any small uh, animals. The field grasses grow naturally um, every year back to four to five feet high, uh, providing a good protection and foraging for bedding um, and bedding for the, the deer. And other and animals, we have many animals back there. Yeah, there's, there's a lot of deer and we really enjoy them. Um, again, never cutting the field grasses with the exception of a discrete footpath um, from my property to the water for personal use. I, I have a little dock out there that it just really serves as a, a, a platform to stay out of the mud um, to, to be able to fish. And, and I'd like to, to get the, uh, the, the commission's uh, uh, understanding uh, or guidance on the ability to trim the, the tops of the prickers, because I know that's vegetation, but again, it's not clearing. I, I don't want to disturb the grasses where the nesting uh, animals are. I'm, I'm very uh, cognizant of that. But also um, the, the, the discrete footpath, it doesn't bother any of my neighbors. I'm very cognizant of the views and, and the, the actual, the deer use it as a corridor to go from the conservation and back through uh, around the, the pond, up through the pathway. In fact, this, this Monday, uh, 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 just a group of eight uh, deer um, just did the same thing, actually in reverse. They came from Main Street uh, down across the back of my yard, down that. So, um, but I'd like to understand is is that allowed? Uh, what the limits are, just in case. Number one, that I want to be in compliance. My wife and I want to be in compliance, but also we want to be able to um, relay, um, you know, with authority what can or cannot be done on the areas that we're responsible. And I say we, I mean the the uh, the one of five of the trustees. Um, so, and again, the, there's also the, the Matt mentioned that I may also have to um, apply uh, uh, for a permit for, even though my, my dock is portable on wheels, it's a smaller dock, um, it can be moved out very easily. Um, and he said, he said that I may have to submit uh, a, a permit request, which I've already started the paperwork on that. Um, but again, just want the opinion of the board um, and, uh, you know, for some guidance. And again, if anything is in violation on my side at, at 60 Run Drive, um, we will remove the dock. We will yep. not have a per, you know, personal footpath there. And we want total compliance. That's it. Okay. Thank you. And, and if, if you want I, I would like to provide the board a chronology of events um uh, from eight deer run drive i will submit that to you guys before you make a decision on eight deer run uh, matt knows most of it but we've had to have the uh, i've had several discussions there have been eight incidents i'm sorry six incidences of violation there um, um major violation cutting down trees um really clearing down to the to the ground after several discussions, having a bat, having a bobcat on the wetlands, clearly um, beyond the the silt fence that's there. In fact, they, the the bobcat ripped up that section. They started with the brush cutter, though, too. Yeah, they, they, they had a they hired a brush cutter, cleared all the way down, just about to the water in one section. I was able to, s to catch them coming home, and and to, and tell the the brush cutter with the brush hog to stop. I said, "You're well within the you know you're you're all all the way to the water." Um, you can't level this 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 uh, area. So he stopped where he was, but the damage was done. Uh, but I have a I have a chronology of events that have taken place and a, a substantial photos to show before and after in each of the uh, the violations. Brush cutters. Um, the police have been called. The firemen have been called. Um, not a, bobcat. The, Just to stop it. I mean, yeah. it's it's one and, thing after another. And Matt's had to be called a couple of times. So. Yes. So apologies for the inconvenience, but we're trying to be good stewards. Yes. Okay. Matt, who's next? Um, 
So, uh, uh, Ms. Lindbergh? Hi, I'm here. So I'm at 8 Deer Run Drive. My husband is not present. Um, and we have been, within reason, clearing our behind the rest of our lot. Um, we did have <coughs> a number of apple trees in our backyard that we took down. Uh, and when we did that, we noticed all the overgrown sumac and bittersweet and thorns and prickers that were obscuring our view, obscuring the pond. And we started talking with other neighbors and we did get all of the documents. We you know, really started reading the conservation restriction and kind of held on to the ideas that this property behind our house was supposed to be maintained by the trustees or the town of Westford. I'm not clear on that because I'm not sure who is the grantor, who is the grantee anymore. But the way we read the conservation restriction was that the behind that whole open space was to be in an early succession vegetation, uh, which when I looked into it is grasses, uh, low shrubs. And if you don't mow it or burn it or graze it or disturb it in some way, it will become a forest. And the purpose of we, you can look on two other houses on number six and number, or number eight and number, no, number 10 and number 12, where it's been neglected and it has not been maintained. So whoever was supposed to maintain it never did. And like there are pictures to prove what it was originally looking like and what it, after 20 years of neglect, looked like. And as the third owner in this house, 18 years or 14 years of neglect turned my back behind my home into a forest. Um, and when I read the conservation restriction, it was to be maintained at its present state. Um, so we have pictures that show it as completely cleared. I mean, the, the silkscreen had to get put down somehow and it didn't get put down around all these 10 foot tall bushes and, and vines and weeds that, that overtook everything. So we had a very hostile relationship with six deer on drive and could not come to any agreement, but could see their completely cleared open space. Um, they do have the grasses that grow up, but we do as well. Our grasses all grow up, the bamboo type of grasses grow up. Um, and they'll be starting in the next couple of weeks, but we had a number of other issues that were uh, creeping up in poison sumac, the bittersweet, a, a number of stuff. And I have photos to show all of that. So when we were told we couldn't burn a viney root in the wetlands, we stopped and we moved the burn pile to our yard. We didn't know that. Um, when we were told we couldn't do things, we stopped. So we just kind of kept on following the conservation restriction. And, you know, the more we read about it and the more we read about what saw pictures as to what this area looked like when the development was built and what we thought the intention was, we didn't see ourselves in the wrong. So I see trees that are out back that have vines growing around them that are killing these trees. And who's responsible for taking care of that is one of my questions. I had asked for a meeting just to say, I have questions about this stuff. I'm being called to the carpet on this stuff. I do have a lot of questions because there's a lot of unclear, like unanswered sections. So that's... pretty much all I have to say. Eric? Peter, all I can say is let's do our site visit. Let's take a look. Let's take a, take a good view of what's actually in the CR, what's been disturbed, and then make uh, recommendations from there. Yeah, yeah I agree. <clears throat> Any other homeowners on here that want to speak? I know Pete Trainer's on there. 
Yes. Um, Mr. Trainer, I don't know. You might need to uh, enter an audio pen before you can speak. Uh, Mr. Trainer was the uh, sent along those slides uh, that were sent approximately six ten this after this evening. Um, I, I saw that. So, uh, Matt, in, in order to, uh, I, I, in order to do a site visit here, I mean, I mean, as I'm as I'm reading the CR right now, I mean, it appears the CR is between the town and the homeowners uh, association. Yes, that's correct, right? Yes. So. If we're going to have a site visit, besides, you know, neighbors that want to be there, we, we need to have a representative from the association. I, I think, um, uh, Mr. Serafin, are you, you're, you're on the board, the, the, you're with the Homeowners Association, correct? Yeah, he's. Um, okay, let's just. What about the cost? Is, is, is Mr. Coster on the board? Yeah, that's, oh, hold on. And they're typing into the chat function. And Mr. Bell also. Um, uh, yes, so to answer your question, sorry, um, Mr. Chair, um, this is Stephen Costa. I am all, the Board of Trustees um, is the association. Um, okay. So, yes, I am, I am one of five uh, members. Um, yes, um, Vinod, Serafin, uh, Jim Walpole, uh, Mike Sofa, uh, myself, Michael Hare, and Michael Hare, and I think believe Michael Hare on this call also. Uh, yeah, we would is have. There a is there a representative of the board that's uh, authorized to speak on your all of your behalf? Any any one? I, I would yeah. I would say any one of Fine. us could do that. I could recuse myself if if necessary, but uh, but. I mean, um, I they I've been informing the board, the the, the association, um, because I'm a member um, all along here. It, as soon as I had the call uh, or get uh, the conservation uh, Matt involved, um, I have informed the trustees. So we're a unified body of what uh, you know our view. Who's the leader of the uh, the, the board? That's who we need. To, I guess we need to speak to, right? I would say more. I would say uh, we kind of. It, it seems to be uh, Vinod, um, but we don't really have a, a leader. I mean, um, is it organized? This board? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Then do you meet? Um, well, we were. We don't. We don't uh, meet as often as we probably should. The last time you met, who was uh, who was the, the, the uh, leader of the meeting? Maybe they don't have any members. Uh, Mr. Trainer, you have been a be, member. So. I would say uh, at this point here, it, it, it would be uh, Vinod. He really takes uh, the leadership role, and, and, and Mike Sofer has been doing the, the treasury, which I will now, uh, but I, I will, I'm going to be starting to do that. We are original homeowners. We're, um, we've been here in the property for 20, almost 21 years now. So. Okay, so, so can you somehow arrange a date and time where we'll be able to do this? I mean, is the commission the commission's amendable for a day visit, right? Can everybody do a day anytime yep, during yep. the week? Yep. Or all around. Okay, so maybe some afternoon, Matt. Yes, Mr. Chair, I'll work on setting that up tomorrow and uh, figuring out um, okay. a time that works for everybody. Um, that will be okay. Uh, Mr. Trainer, I think we've figured out the audio issues. Okay. Can you hear me now? Yeah, we can hear you. Yes. Terrific. Oh, thank you. So, hope everyone's doing well. Uh, thanks for the opportunity to speak. So, um, I don't know if you can put my presentation on the 
on the screen, but I, I spent some time on it. If, if not, we, if you have a copy, we can walk through it. But I have this all lined up. I've gone through, you know, each section of the, the easement, and I'm I'm ready to talk about it and explain it to the whole group. Is that reasonable? Uh, I, I I think people we want to do is we we want to go through um, through the uh, CRSLs. We want to set up a site visit. And uh, if you can be there, that would be great. We've got your presentation. It's, it's pretty straightforward. Um, and I think we all can understand it. And, uh, but th the bottom line here is we need to go out and look at the site after we've gone through the CR. We've got your notes, we've got your presentation, and that's fine. Um, and uh, we'll have a meeting on site so we all can see it in person. I think it's kind of tough for us to visualize some of the stuff, but. Uh, it will be nice for us to get out there and review everything. Uh, and of course, you know, you're all welcome to be there. Okay, well, that sounds good. I, I, you know, maybe I'll just hit the high point. So first of all, I find it ironic that uh, number six was whinging about his next door neighbor cutting when he's been cutting for 20 years. And you know what, if you read, Peter, stop although, this. If, Peter, if yeah. you read the news, it's not your main. Hey, don't get into that. Okay. okay, just oh, you fine. Know, uh, so if, if, you, if you read the easement, it allows for cutting, right? It allows for a 20-foot trail. We're talking about adding a trail down that end. That trail was approved. It's, it's already approved. It doesn't have to. There's no negotiation there. That, that trail was approved in 2001. And, you know, Bill, Bill Turner, who used to be the chair, he and I walked the path, and he, he allowed us to make the cuts. We've been doing it, the same thing for 22 years. We haven't done anything different. The only thing that's different is that one of the neighbors got angry at one of the other neighbors and blew this out of proportion. So I'm, I'm looking forward to this site walk and going over these documents together because we're not doing anything wrong. We're following the, the letter of the law. I, yeah, I, I think you're, you're mostly correct, Pete. I, definitely with the trail. You guys have a right to clear the trail easement. Um, but there are a couple other things in there as far as doing other cuttings that need the uh, the uh, notification of the conservation restriction holder, which is the conservation commission, and and those are the things that we need to talk about when we're on site. Okay. Okay. Thanks for that. Okay. So uh, Matt Matt's going to set up a, a time for when we can get out there when when most of you can be there. Okay. It'll be during the week. Um, hope we're hopefully coming in some to some good weather, so we should have should be able to have a good site yeah. visit to see everything. Okay, Matt, thanks for that, Mr. Chair. I'd like to. We've received some uh, questions, and I'd just like them um, entered into the record for sure. um, um, Mark Bell. Uh, the homeowner is there risking the natural habitat by extending their lawns closer to the water. Uh, suspicion then is also the lawns are having treatments applied um, he followed that up a minute later with brush cutters on a holiday herd throughout the neighborhood um, 808 um, the other side of the water is a natural habitat and what one would expect for the full setback around the perimeter um, uh, Stephen and Charlene um, the trust Trustees of Chestnut Hill were never informed of, of her request or, or uh, to cut or maintain. Stopped each time temporarily, not from my numerous requests, but because WPD and WFD. Um, uh, Mr. Trainer had an, uh, it, uh, entered in a comment about the audio. Um, Michael O'Hare, he said he's here as well. I think that was, he was identified as one of the um, uh, trustees, I think. Um, and then Stephen and Charlene Costa, um, more recently, I would like to make a comment. Trail is a different issue. Look at the dumping, clearing, cutting of trees, not in the easement. Um, and Followed that up with no trail easement allowance hardship issues. Um, and I'm just missed um, the Stephen and Charlene, you can just I just speak your last if you unmute. Uh, I don't understand your last comment and I prefer yeah, yeah. you to say it. I just 
This is Stephen Costa again. I uh, just want to make a final statement uh, on behalf of the uh, Ch Chestnut Hill uh, Estates uh, Trustees, Board of Trustees, uh, that we were not informed, we were not aware or informed about um, any violation behind Sinbad um, until it was brought to our attention by uh, Eight Deer Run Drive that that's how they felt justified in, in clearing beyond it's not about the the easement they're using that now as an as some point but um it's cleared way beyond the the uh the it goes uh, all the way to the water the easement okay the trail easement it's way to the water cutting down trees but my point is is that we were not aware and it was only until it was brought to our attention by eight deer run that there was violation and then i just said in fairness um that we would have matt walk that and then check it out so matt and i walked and and saw those violations but otherwise it doesn't appear as though any violations in on the end of sinbad have any um well obviously their their violation of the the buffers on uh, the wetlands buffer but there isn't any complaint um from residents for for sinbad that could have been that could have been going on for years like that and probably has without any kind of complaint to the board and i just wanted to make sure that um, it was just brought to our attention recently, so we, we, weren't, we weren't trying to be a negligent. Okay. Yeah, may okay. I make a comment? This is Charlene Costa. Um, it's, yep. not, it's more also, too, about the animals and the habitats that are being disturbed by all of the destruction that's going on too close to the water, which is within the 50-foot buffer, within the 100-foot buffer. I mean, it, it's wait till you see. Uh, we have all the pictures and documents. We will. We'll no see one. it. But the Let's one other comment I want to say is that during a, a planning board uh, meeting in the summer of 2001, um, there was, you know, you mentioned earlier about, well, it's okay on the, 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 um, the easement. The easement where the trails are right now and, and, and actually maintained, um, yes, that was accepted because the, uh, not only the, the, the current, um, the board at the time, but also the, the um, conservation trusts, um, main objective was satisfied with the current trails um, based on the fact that they wanted to connect Main Street to Buckboard trails and then to um, to Chamberlain. So because that was satisfied, the section of trail that was behind Deer Run Drive directly on that did not wrap all the way around the small pond. Um, and because of the, the some of the comments that we had said at the time, and I talked, I spoke to to uh, Eric Ekman and and um, and Bill Turner at the time. And I obviously that's why for over 20 years the the the, the trail behind our Deer Run has not been done. On the other side of Deer Run, it has. And I would like the, the to have another separate review on the trail easement, and that it's it's clear that that none of the residents are to are to start clearing anything on that trail without authority or uh, permission from the board of trustees who are now listed as owners and also the abutters along all the abutters along the run so right now there's plenty of trails to, to satisfy the original trust's objective um, and and this is the only remaining safe habitat for the beavers, the deer, the, the rabbits, the uh, pheasants, the, turtles. The, the ducks, the turtles on the rock. The blue and if you bring people through there, it's not going to be able to have a nesting area for the deer. Um, so that's I just wanted to make sure that that's a, that uh, people are aware okay. of that. Okay, you've got a lot to do. Uh, Miss, uh, 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 the resident at um, Eight Deer Run has raised her hand, Mr. Chair. Okay. <laughs> You want to recognize it? Yep. Uh. I just wanted to also follow up. Um, as the newest neighbor to this development, we have been here for about seven years and have kind of just observed and kind of, you know, looked at documents and looked at what neighbors were doing and made some decisions that way. But seeing kids around this pond as much as they have been the past year fishing walking having like just out there meeting each other and there's holes in the ground and beaver spikes all over the place there's no safe place they're walking in the edge by the wetlands where the nesting is and all this if we finished that trail as we 
should have, as it should have been, people would have a safe place to walk. And if we're worried about our kids with trees falling on them, we should worry about them falling on these paths that are legal paths. So I think, I think when we take our walk, we can look at the paths and think, kids are out here anyways, we should make it safe for them. Um, and I think that's not an aside, but really a, an important part of this discussion. Not okay. Really. Let's, uh, okay. Is that everybody, Matt? Uh, I think so, Mr. Chair. I okay. don't see any right. more hand raise. Um, okay. And so you'll I will be in touch to you'll arrange the site visit. Yes, I will coordinate a site visit, find a day that um, works for the most people, um, and we'll meet to. From there. See, go from there. Thanks, Eric. Thank you. Thank you, everyone, for uh, attending tonight. Okay. Um, I think we've covered everything in the discussion items. Um, Certificates of compliance. Yeah, we did that. Yeah, we did that. Yeah, we've done everything. Uh, Good. Marilyn has her hand up. Marilyn. I just wanted to say that. Uh, during our meeting, I texted Elizabeth Al Almeida. So Matt, I already have the link and you have the link as well. So you can pass the Chronicle to everybody. I will send that along shortly after the meeting and, you know, should be able to uh, have some, a nice Chronicle uh, story to wind down from the meeting. Okay. Or tomorrow. Or tomorrow. Yeah. Motion to uh, adjourn. So moved. Second. All in favor, Marilyn? Yes. Eric? Yes. Margaret? Yes. And yes. Jim? Yes. Noel? Yes. And Peter? Yes. Okay, you guys. Have a good rest of the evening. Uh, Thanks, regular night. time. Up at night, everyone. Black o'clock, same time, Matt. Yep, I'll be down at one o'clock, Peter. If you want to show up a little bit later, I won't, you know, fault you for for uh, being a little tardy. I'll see you at twelve. Bye bye. Have a good night. Yeah. Okay.